Okay, so welcome everyone to our first of three uh, virtual tastings with cheese pairings. Uh, we had such a great success with the last cheese pairing, well, the last virtual tasting uh, from Burgundy. Um, with Hannah, she came in and she offered some suggestions for cheeses to pair with our wines. So we thought that would be really exciting to have a series of how to pair some wines with cheeses. Um, today we're doing the uh, Pair of Shaps Summer Cheese and Wine Pairing. Hopefully everyone has their wines and their cheeses. Uh, we wanted to partner with Feast in Charlottesville because they're a local uh, gourmet grocery shop that has a really awesome cheese selection. So thank you to Feast for helping with, uh, with all of that. And here I have my cheese board laid out and it's really pretty. Um, the cheeses you should have are Little Hosmer, Appalachian, Flory's Truckle, and Roaring Forties Blue, or something similar to those four. And the wines we're going to do today are our 2017 Viognier, our 2018 Burgundy Rosé, our Maison Charmelieu 2017 Morbon, and then we're going to finish off with a pretty recent uh, release, our 2015 Raisin Detra Blanc. And so Hannah is currently in the cellar and in France, and she will get us started. So if you want to unmute yourself, Hannah. That would All be right, good. can everybody hear me? Yes, and let me just spotlight your video real quick. All right. Great. Okay, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining um, and letting me share kind of what I do and pair some cheese and wine tonight. So as Ivy mentioned, I am in Burgundy. I'm actually in the Maison Chap cellar. Um, this is where we do our aging of our white wines. So here, for example, I have Aligote, or there will be Aligote um, pretty soon because the harvest is starting this week um, and they'll age in here. So we're actually under the house, the guest house that if one day you have the opportunity to visit, you could stay and see this. Um, so I am in Burgundy. I've actually been working in a cheese shop here in Bone, so about 15 minutes from or so. Um, I'm a cheesemonger, so I've kind of dedicated my professional life to selling and advising people um, about cheese. So in the States, before coming to France, I was working for Wegmans, so I did that for about a year and a half, and then I decided that I should come to the epicenter of really good cheese and move to Burgundy. Um, thankfully, I'm half French, so for me, it wasn't too difficult um, to be, become employed. Um, so I was really fortunate on that behalf and I already spoke French and the love of cheese was definitely there. So it's now been a year and a half and I've been living and working here. Um, I get to eat a lot of great cheese. I get to interact and meet our producers um, and kind of just learn more about this. And I think that one day the goal would be to try to take the cheese I'm tasting here, both in France and Italy and Switzerland and try to bring it back to the States. Um, what I noticed when I was working at Wegmans in the cheese industry in the U.S. is that there is a growth and a new found appreciation for really nice artisanal cheese. Um, people are turning away from the craft singles and going towards small crafted artisanal producers like some of the cheeses we're going to taste today. Uh, so I thought it would be a great kind of career path to try to share and um, highlight American cheese and world cheese and all the good flavors and kind of the background and stories of the cheeses. So our first cheese today is going to be your little Hosmer. So it's the round whitish one. You all should have that or something similar. Um, so actually the way we did this is we worked through um, the wine and the cheeses together. So the first wine is going to be our Viognier. Um, originally I wanted to pair the Appalachian cheese with um, the Viognier, but we actually all tasted through myself virtually, and I and my father um, in person in Charlottesville, and we realized that there was a little bit too much acidity in the wine um, for the cheese that turned out to be milder than we thought. So we kind of turned around, looked at the other cheeses we had selected, and noticed that the creaminess and the really rich mushroom flavors of the Brie style cheese would actually balance the Viognier better and allow the, the two to come together and not hide one another. So when we're gonna be pairing cheese and wine, the goal is to create harmony instead of a discord. So you really want both to kind of come together and not overshadow each other. Um, and you're not gonna kind of try to hide the flavors of one or the other. You want them to enhance themselves or each other. Um, so you all should have your cheeses. I've actually built a little cheese board with mine. Um, so as I said, this is Little Hosmer. It's actually from Jasper Hill in Greensboro, Vermont. 
Uh, so they've been around since 2003, and they're actually really big pioneers and at the forefront of the artisanal American cheese industry. They have a huge aging cellar um, and are really important to the, in the cheese industry in the States. Uh, they make their own cheeses, they age other cheeses. So you can kind of think of them as like the wine works of the Vermont cheese industry. They actually can age other cheeses from small farms who might not have the, cap like the capacity or, or the capabilities, and they do that there. Um, so for tasting cheese, we actually want to take it, we want to look at it, we want to smell it, kind of like when you're drinking wine, which I think all of you might know how to taste wine at this point. Um, so you're going to look at it, you're going to see that the paste, um, which is the inside, should not be running too much, but it should be kind of, kind of soft, a little bit pudgy, but shouldn't run away. So this cheese is actually a bloomy rind cheese uh, made with pasteurized milk. So its name comes from a small pond that's actually near the farm. So they've kind of kept it local and it's going to be their cows as well. And they've aged it um, for a few weeks that it develops the rind that's actually been um, developed with the aid of Penicillium candidum. It's a natural occurring um, ambient mold that they either spray on the cheese or it's in the aging rooms. So it, it develops itself naturally um, throughout the aging process and allows the cheese to age from the outside in, um, which is why sometimes when soft cheeses aren't ripe, the middle is a little bit chalkier rather than smooth. It's because throughout the aging process, they go from the outside in. So for this cheese, we're gonna cut a little piece off. We're gonna, we're gonna get to eating, it's eating time. Um, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna smell it. It should have um, some really nice kind of like mushroomy, strong, pungent notes. Um, like I said, it shouldn't really be running away. It should kind of hold its form a little bit, but still be soft. There shouldn't be too much chalkiness. It should be kind of uniform in color. Um, so we're gonna take a bite. We're gonna put it in our mouths, we're gonna taste it. So you should notice it's gonna kind of coat your whole palate. It's gonna be salty, it's gonna be unctuous. It's gonna have some like cauliflower, mushroom, fungus notes. And so now we're gonna, we're gonna get into the wine part. So I'm gonna turn it over to my father and he's gonna introduce the wine and then we'll taste the both together. All right, thank you, Hannah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, good to see everybody. I'm happy to be able to do this. I'm here at Harris Creek at the winery, if you can't tell. And uh, so we got both, uh, both wineries representing today in the tasting. Um, we, Ivy and I, as Hannah said, went through the cheeses and the wines and came up with this pairing and kind of want to make it a, a summer theme wines that are you know, perfect for this time of year. And uh, the Viognier is ideal. And this is the 2017 uh, Michael Schaps Viognier. Uh, it's a blend of two different vineyard sites. Uh, most of it is from our Mountain View uh, vineyard that we um, have, I've been making Viognier from that now for, I guess, 13 years, which is just outside of Roanoke. And then also blended with some of our Hanalee Viognier from Gordonsville. Very two different uh, growing sites and uh, styles of Viognier. The Mountain View uh, is a high elevation, cooler site, so we get a little bit brighter acidity. Uh, a little more floral notes. Uh, actually, in this wine, as we taste, I, I pick up a little more earthy, a little uh, also fennel notes, some anise characteristics. Uh, and then the Hanali is a big fruit, lots of peach, apricot notes from a hotter site. So it's all stainless steel fermented. All the, the Viognese, as well as all the wines I make, are uh, made without any yeast addition. So it's more of a natural fermentation, which helps uh, the slow transition from juice to wine and, and retains a lot of the uh, aromatic qualities. Uh, of the grapes uh, in, in the final wine. And so if we always say, a little, little tidbit in the wine industry, um, grapes to buy wine, cheese to sell wine. So if you're uh, a, a person uh, visiting cellars in France or in the US, uh, you wanna have fruit to match the uh, acidity and flavors in the wine, but cheese is uh, always a winemaker's best trick to try to make the wine taste better. So the richness of the cheese always helps improve the wine. So as we say, grapes to buy wine, cheese to sell wine. So a little happy fact for you guys. Um, the Viognier, uh, if you smell, I get some of the peach notes for sure, 
But as I mentioned, there's a little bit of that kind of fennel character, which I like uh, as well. There's no oak in this, all stainless steel. So what you get is the kind of pure uh, fruit characteristics. But the little earthiness from the, uh, maybe from the fennel or the uh, herbaceousness that you get in it really, I think, pairs nicely with the uh, earthiness of the cheese. Yeah, I think we try to identify key, key notes and key, key flavors, and then we want to pull them out in our pairing. So we decided that the earthiness is something that we wanted to highlight in this particular pairing. So they're supposed to bring it together. So. Yeah, I really like the way the, the, the cheese really, the nice kind of acidity in the cheese really matches nicely with the Viognier. Um, and they both have uh, the earthiness on the palate, which I like. The, um, the fruit characters of the Viognier are a little more subdued, a little more elegant on the, on the palate, not a big fruity Viognier, but really good acidity, which is, you know, the, one of the key characteristics I like about the Mountain View Viognier is the nice acidity from a cooler, uh, more northerly facing vineyard site. Um, it actually ripens, even though it's down in Roanoke, it ripens later than our Viognier uh, in Gordonsville because of the elevation and aspect. So it's really uh, been a key part of my, my Viognier production because of its uniqueness. And I think you really pick it up on the palate here. Um, Shall we so try it together? <laughs> I, I just did. I tried it. Oh, I, I you didn't everyone... tell us to do it. <laughs> oh, everyone, I hope everyone else has tried it. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, take a bite of your cheese, kind of let it linger in your palate, and then try that wine. I think it's a great pairing. I do say so myself. <laughs> um, Ivy, do we want to open up, like, be, before we move on, questions? Be a good time before we, be, after yeah. each, each? Yeah, if anyone question. would like to unmute themselves whenever you have a question or have something to add, some comments or tasting notes. Uh, please feel free. Yeah, unmute, but remember to mute yourself back when you're done so we don't have too many, too many people. So anybody have any questions or comments? I, I would uh, just like to say that this, this v &A reminds me very much of a v &A that we get from California. And I don't know if it's uh, a similar uh, environment or if it's, I, I think it probably is similar to uh, no, it's a winery right outside of uh, Santa Barbara. Yep. So um, would that be similar? Yeah, some of the, you know, Viognier uh, loves hot, hot climates. And so some of the similarities would be the heat and, uh, and ripening, which brings out a lot of the aromatic qualities of fruit. Um, but here it's much more humid. Um, it's also, you know, damper, wetter. So the style is, there's some similarities, but here, the Mountain View part of this uh, is very different than I say the, um, uh, the Santa Barbara style. It's a little bit cooler climate. Uh, not, I don't know much about the, the, the one that you're referring to, but in general, generally speaking. Uh, so it's, that would be uh, maybe a little bit different, but you know, I guess that's a, that's a, a positive comparison, right? <laughs> in terms of it the style. It was, it was. No, this is very good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. A lot of the California venues come from maybe more northern parts of California where it's a much uh, higher in alcohol, richer, a little bit sweeter characteristic. So in general, that's kind of the difference between the styles that I make, the style I make and what you might find from California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was very good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other comments, questions about the cheese or the wine? Okay. Hannah? Yes, to just explain, yeah, well, first, just to explain why we're doing this, I don't know if we said this, but we really want to give you guys the confidence to explore pairings at home or be able to entertain and, and be knowledgeable about the wine you're drinking, as well as possible things you can serve it with. So this is really just to empower you guys to kind of explore the world of, of wine and, and cheese pairing and wine and other pairings. So we're excited to do this. And then one last thing about the, the little Hosmer cheese, if you guys don't finish it today, um, feel free to wrap it up in cheese paper and put it in a Ziploc or Tupperware um, so not to suffocate it, but to let it breathe. And it should have a short week, maybe five days to keep kind of keep in your fridge and be able to eat it um, and just be able to trim off any kind of suspicious looking parts as it stays in your fridge. Um, cheese is mold, so a little bit of mold is normal. Don't be afraid um, and you can definitely keep it a little bit in your fridge. 